Hi guys, Jeanette Barber, Daily Woody, Central Park, New York City. God help me. There's another beep. I swear I'm not making it up. It started this way. Beep. It started, and it's a little one, just a chirp. Beep. This morning, uh, 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 every six, beep, every 60 seconds. And, and as of yet, I have not found it. I, I've been going floor to floor, waiting in stairwells, and I go, no. And then you go to wait a minute. And you, you hear, is it? No, I think it's, and then you go, what? I'm growing old here, looking for the frickin' chirp. Who, what maniac thought that was a good idea? When the battery runs out, why doesn't, why not a continuous beep so that you will go and find it? A chirp, no one can find, chirp, no one can find this. I, if I could find whoever invented that, I would boil them in oil, I think, um, as a kindness to all of us because I care. Uh, and, and I would use canola oil because it's very bad for you. Um, uh, it is very bad for you. Yes, it is. Um, it's uh, made of rapeseed. They uh, actually have to use deodorizers when uh, they uh, process it because it's rancid. Uh, it, and they, they say it's healthy, but it's not healthy. It's not at all. It's because it, it, uh, it's got uh, saturated fat, polyunsaturated fat, and mono saturated or something like that and one of them is good but the whole thing put together when you heat canola oil it uh it it uh, it emits benzene which causes you know cancer uh among other things some study in japan in 1996 uh proved that it will kill animals and it drains vitamin e and it uh, causes inflammation and heart attacks and cellulite so enough about my ass no no i think that i think that i think the canola oil is perfect to boil whoever inve chirp, invented that miserable uh, 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 sound. So, and I can't believe there's another one. I can't believe there's another one. So, uh, so, uh, so this is how conspiracy theories begin. We're going to do one right now. Uh, COVID-19 drains batteries. Did you know that? Oh yeah. Uh huh. Smoke alarms, uh, flashlights, uh, your remote is at risk, vibrators. Um, <laughs> I don't. I don't like to say vibrator. It's not the word that I don't like, but I. I don't think anybody wants. Uh, I don't think anyone wants that image. So, you're welcome. Uh, I actually. Uh, why do I think you want this information? I don't have one, and um, <laughs> I'm gonna tell this one. Uh, uh, years ago, uh, I was working in a club when I was doing stand-up. I was working in a club. It, you know, where it was. It was. I am almost 100% certain it was the trap. Uh, every good thing happened either at uh, the Comedy Trap in Buffalo, Wise Guys in Syracuse, or the Looney Bin in uh, in Michigan. Those were the best the best times ever. But anyway, I think it was the trap. And uh, whoever I was working with, I'm not going to say because the story I'm going to tell was great. This really great guy, and I just absolutely love him. And uh, he had his wife or girlfriend, I think she was both uh, alternately with him, and she was the most beautiful girl I had ever seen in my entire life, and she had the coolest personality. Uh, I loved her. And somehow in conversation uh, over the week, the, it came up that I didn't have a vibrator. I don't know how we brought this up, but I did. Um, and she's aghast. You don't have a vibrator. I you know, honestly, it's good. I'm, I'm, I'm good with this. Um, uh, so uh, then weeks later, I walk into the comic strip, and uh, the bartender says, Jeanette, somebody left a package for you. And it was a brown paper bag. And she had gotten a new vibrator and given me her old one. I, I mean, I think we can all agree that that was a lovely gift. Um, I didn't use it. I mean, you know, not even to massage my neck, which I know that's what they're for. That and stirring tea. I didn't use it. Uh, for either one of those, but I thought it was an odd thing that someone would think that you would want that. But I mean, I, I was I was appreci I, I was appreciative. So, um, but people are going to be in crisis now because COVID definitely drains batteries, and uh, it uh, well, it also apparently makes you stone deaf. Because, I, am I the only one in the building? A am I the only person? Because it doesn't seem like anybody else complains. Beep! I can't stand it. Beep! Beep! Oh, this is the word. Beep! Just enough, and you go. Oh, it's right. Beep. It's really all right. I told you the one in my house, right? Years ago, when I had a house, um, in the middle of the night, the beep starts going off, and 
I had cathedral ceilings, so I couldn't get up there to take it down. And the only way to get up there, because and a normal ladder wouldn't wouldn't reach, I'd have to go out in the dark. And we were in the woods; there was no light at all. I would have to go out in the dark and carry a ladder all the way up. I would rather beep listen to that for the rest of my life than do that, because. I'm not going to say that I'm afraid of the dark. I'm just going to let you figure it out. Because <laughs> I'm not afraid of the dark in my apartment, but in a city, you know, it really never gets dark. Uh, and I'm, I'm not afraid in a, I'm not afraid at all in a city. I just, you know, drop me in the Bronx in the middle of the night and, you know, I'm going to go, hey, buddy. Hey, you with the gun. Nice. It looks good. I, I think the cops are coming. So ixnay on the gun. Hey, good to meet you. I'm good. I'm not afraid. But put me in the woods. I, I had an elaborate fantasy worked out for my uh, for my house because it had three doors to the outside. Well, four if you count downstairs, but we're just counting the upstairs where I was living. So it, was, it was an above ground basement, so I was up there with uh, with three doors. And when I was there alone at night, during the day it was fine. The minute it got dark, the terror came. I was absolutely freaking out of my mind every single night sometimes I would have to go and, and the house was all glass too glass walls glass everywhere so sometimes I would go and, and relax in the walk-in closet but I had this elaborate fantasy worked out of what I would do when the killer came I am clearly obsessed with killers and it depended on which door they came in which one I was going to run out of but then I realized that it was going to require shopping I realized I needed a black nightgown because all of my nightgowns were white and they'd be able to see me I needed a black nightgown so I could run out if it was the back I go over up the hill and over to the, st the stone wall and lay on the side if it was the front I go down the hill over a stone wall and lay at the side and if it was on that side I'd go over and lay in the bushes but I realized that a black nightgown was going to be absolutely necessary for that and some you know black grease paint uh, so that I could uh, use it like a soldier, you know, like football players under my eyes. This is, this is what I spent my time doing. So uh, that has nothing to do with the beat, but I was really kind of uh, afraid to, uh, to be alone in the dark at night. I can't, you know what I'm seeing here in, in the woods uh, more? Beds. I'm seeing people's, you know, like cardboard and some old clothes so you know they're sleeping here. And uh, I could no more sleep in the woods at night by myself I, a war zone i'm good with war zone been there done that it's fine uh you haven't seen uh, a building until after you've seen what an american cruise missile does to it i'm good with all of that but i can't be alone in the woods at night that's not gonna happen oh my god i think it's getting dark it's mid-afternoon but i've got a dash um i will see you uh, remember that tomorrow is uh the absinthe live tomorrow 6 30 eastern 5 30 central 4 30 mountain 330 Pacific, showing an exemplary ability to do math. Uh, see you uh, tomorrow, guys. Share it if you like it. Bye-bye.